Thank you. Um, my name is Mike Strong. I am here with Packet, and I'd like to introduce you to Packet. So, what is Packet? Um, Packet is a bare metal hardware cloud that really provides you infrastructure uh, in a very developer friendly way. So, one of the things that we want to be able to do is allow developers to acquire a resource quickly in a cloud, wherever that cloud is. And the way that I kind of explain this to my mom at the end of the day is that uh, what I do for computers over the internet is just turn them on and off. It's been super easy to turn computers on and off. And that becomes uh, pretty interesting uh, when you get to some of these problems. The packet portfolio itself uh, consists of three major areas. We have our public cloud, so if you and user goes to packet.com, you can get an instance from us uh, on demand in probably 60 seconds to uh, five minutes. And it's a bare metal instance, so there's no virtualization involved, and you get the entire machine to yourself. We've taken the automation that we have from our public cloud and we've made that available in an enterprise way. So if you operate a large enterprise IT environment and you would benefit from having a very developer-friendly, consistent API to automate your hardware. We have a product that we as well. And then finally, the piece that we see that's super interesting and relevant for this space is that at the edge. So at the edge, we start bumping into all sorts of funny problems that occur in that what kind of resources are available there, how do you automate that, how do you bring it up, how do you bring it down, all the exact same problems you have in the cloud. But it gets magnified from the edge because in cloud environments, what you have is, let's say, five sites that you operate on your thousand machines in. But at the edge, you kind of invert that problem and it becomes an exponential problem for you to manage. But having a very consistent development from the API fixes that problem for you. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, again, uh, we have 20 plus locations uh, worldwide. Uh, I'm sure we have resources available for you somewhere. So, why pack it? Um, we have this model of uh, no multi tenancy, you get bare metal. Um, we kind of explained all of this. Uh, and all of this really leads back to a question of how do we differentiate this problem? Um, but when you think about this as there are workloads that just don't well, work well in a virtualized environment, and especially when you push it to the edge, and how do we go fix some of those problems for the ecosystem at the edge? Because at the end of the day, your software ecosystem is probably iterating quite a bit faster than your hardware ecosystem. So all of these um, logos that are up here were probably never around 10 years ago when we started thinking about this problem, and may or may not be around in another 10 years when we start talking about this edge problem. So it comes back to us as a hardware provider of bare metal of how do we get our cycle time to develop hardware and innovate that hardware as something that resembles the speed of software. Because at the end of the day, that software is going to be the differentiator for your package or your uh, application, but it's going to win by running on top of hardware that is actually the true differentiator. And so with, with Packet at the Edge, what we want to be able to do is allow you to have your opinion of your hardware that meets your application in any location that you want. So having a bare metal cloud that you can take anywhere with a very consistent API. Okay. Scott Burns, I'm the Senior Director of Research and Development at Packet. Um, Packet Labs is a small group that started recently at Packet, and our job is to solve all the hard problems. So uh, one problem we had recently was we, we wanted to use Open 19. Uh, we really like the um, blind mid connection features of the Open 19 specification. It's, it's very easy to uh, install servers without requiring I leave school technicians. So the um, problem is, uh, even though there's a quickly growing ecosystem around Open 19, uh, you know, there are a number of uh, great server vendors here that are developing uh, Open 19 servers. But um, while we're waiting for that ecosystem to grow, uh, we wanted to find a way to use uh, off-the-shelf servers. So that's how can we do that. OK, so. First problem is uh, typical server motherboard will not fit in an Open 19 brick. Open 19 brick is a little less than half the width of a standard 19 inch server. And uh, typical ATX motherboard is uh, quite, quite too big to fit on there, so that was out. 
Um, now, luckily, uh, in the last few years, the trend has been going to uh, using smaller server motherboards and servers. So, how about micro ATX? Surely that was it. Nope. Micro ATX is still too big for an open IT brick. So, but really, um, this question, okay, fine. Can't use ATX, can't use micro ATX. What can we use? How about uh, mini ITX? Okay, good. Mini ITX works. It's uh, coming a much more popular server form factor these days. And uh, not only does it fit in the brick, but it leaves a uh, little room on the sides for cabling or um, any other type of uh, hardware you might need to put in there. So it just happens to be perfect size. So mini ITX, okay, fine. So um, now the open 19 brick is fairly large uh, lengthwise. Um, and many ITX board only takes up a small fraction of that space. So what do you do with all the extra space? Let's put multiple boards in there. Might as well, otherwise you're wasting quite a bit of space. All right, so fine. How many uh, the ITX server boards can we fit in the rick? We do need the leave room for fans. We need the interposer at the back of the brick in order to connect to the network and the power. Um, so it leaves a good amount of space. So, uh, you know, you can fit three mini ITX boards in there comfortably. Uh, four, theoretically fit, it's very tight fit, um, but there are some challenges to solve if we're not able to do that. Well, that's why Bag Labs is here. We're here to solve challenges. So, um, my big project at Packet for the last couple of months has been to design a quad node, uh, open 19 brick. Just a prototype, this is not a product. Uh, we have a product team that's already working with manufacturers and uh, nice polished design, but um, we need something back at labs that we can use for prototyping any ideas that we have uh, without having to rely on official products from Packet. So uh, my project for the last couple months has been to create a prototype server that Packet Labs can use for any uh, ideas that we come up with. So, how do you do that? Um, you know, like I said, this is just a little prototype project in a small group within Packet. Um, I'm not a professional hardware engineer. I'm not a mechanical engineer. Um, so I had to use tools available to me. Uh, and I was able to do the whole project using open source software, luckily. Um, First step was to design PCBs. You need an interposer that's going to let you use the onboard networking of the server boards that you put in there. And uh, so I used a keycad to design PCBs. Um, keycad has come a long way in the last few years. If you tried using it three or four years ago, you might have given up um, the first few hours of trying it. But it's come a long way. Uh, it's had uh, developer resources poured into it from CERN, uh, the particle accelerator guys. Um, and they rival some um, commercial PCB software. You don't have to go out there and buy Altium. Um, you can just use TCAT, um, free download. It's as form as supported. Gets the job done if uh, you don't have a large budget to do this. Okay, so then the mechanical design needed to design bricks that would be able to um, have the correct screw locations to uh, mount motherboards and any other uh, sporting boards in there. So, there's another piece of open source software, FreeCAD. And again, this is another piece of software where if you used it a few years ago, you would probably come away very frustrated. But um, again, this has also come a long way. So, just within the last year or two, uh, it's really become impossible to use open source software to do all the design that you need to do to build your own server. All right, and um, another topic uh, I wanted to discuss is uh, Open 19 specification has a data connector. Uh, right now it's uh, meant to support up to four uh, 25 gigabit Ethernet ports. But um, just thinking for the future, what if we uh, didn't have to use Ethernet on there? I mean, it is just a cable that supports a generic serial signal that doesn't necessarily have to be Ethernet. What if we use PCI Express? It's open up a lot of possibilities. Um, 
Maybe you want to use accelerator cars, but you don't want to have to put them in your brick. It would be a lot better if the bricks were in just compute. So if you could have your accelerator cars outside of the brick and their own separate bricks that are designed specifically for hosting accelerator cars, you do that, you have external PCI Express. Um, you use the same connector, you just need to be able to support it. Uh, what well, would normally be your Ethernet switch, you just have PCI Express switch in there. So um, it really opens up possibilities for disaggregation. You can have servers where, when, at the time you install the server, all it is is a CPU and RAM and storage. But uh, you can add other devices in real time. Nobody has to go in and plug anything in. Nobody has to manually do anything. You can use an API call uh, to your software to just connect devices as you need them to your bricks. I think it's worth discussing. Uh, I'm sure uh, we're not the only folks that have had this idea. I'm sure there are other people here that have as well. So uh, definitely be interested in collaborating with anybody else who would uh, like to discuss that sometime. Um, with that, uh, I wondered, OK, so what I've been working on has been to put four servers in the one brick. Could we possibly put more in there? I'm going to hand that over to Carl. That works out. So one of the things that we were looking at is trying to enable other architectures inside of Open19 infrastructure. And so the idea was, where can we get things that are not necessarily purpose-built x86 boards? And a lot of that comes from the embedded space. So one of the things that we have been starting down the path of developing is uh, trying to use Com Express Type 7 modules as a, a microserver that can go onto a carrier board in an Open19 infrastructure. Could put more than two of these in a brick, but we're starting with two for right now because it gives us the ability to have two network links to each one. Um, we're going to need some node-specific parts. Open IT, the uh, excuse me, Com Express Type 7 standard basically gives you the processor, the memory, and a bunch of interconnect. And so we would then put on the carrier board the pieces that we would need to plug that into the rest of the infrastructure. So your network switches, however you want to deal with your storage, all of that fun stuff would live on the carrier board. And then we just swap out modules to an extent, it's not perfect, but it gives us a little bit of a way to, to try new things, try and bring new architectures into the ecosystem, uh, and do that in a cheap way with off-the-shelf components. Um, but you're gonna need a way to manage that. And as operators, we have some serious desires for things to be different in the land of baseband management controllers. So one of the things that we're excited about is working with the Run BMC project. Um, Currently, a lot of the stuff that's happening with Run BMC basically just defines an electrical and mechanical specification for putting a BMC module into a common interface. Um, so here's an example of said module uh, with the name of the innocent uh, cover just to try and make life a little bit better for everyone. Um, but these modules can be swapped out, and then that gives us as operators the ability to do something we've never had before, which is choose what BMC we want. Um, there's a lot of interesting problems that have to be solved here as well. Software-wise, most of the software that's running on the BMC is also provided by the same folks who make the BIOS in your system, or the UEFI firmware, depending on what level of software you're working with. Um, so there's stuff that has to be solved there from a uh, software perspective. There's an effort right now called OpenBMC, originally came out of the Open Compute Project, to try and build open source software to run on existing modules. Um, we're looking at that, and I'm also working on a process of might be easier to actually have an open hardware platform upon which we can put open software on top of and make that available um, for folks to work with. So any other operators here who have strong opinions about baseband management controllers, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. We, we have time, so we will take questions if we can. Or you can just go find the happens. Yes? <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry. Since you guys provide a bare metal cloud, how do you protect the firmware on your systems and ensure that it's in a consistent state? 
So a lot of that happens right now during our provisioning and our deprovisioning process, and another part of it happens with partnerships with our hardware vendors. So we do things like prevent you from being able to upgrade certain firmwares, restricting access to BMCs, stuff like that. It's difficult, it's tricky, there's lots of problems with that as new firmwares come out. For example, for the BIOS, we then need to get a new version of a BIOS that has certain patches in it for us. It becomes complicated. That's part of the reason why we're looking at trying to do this stuff in, in new and different ways to solve those sorts of problems. And actually, uh, one project that uh, we are likely to get started on soon would actually involve um, having another chip in between your you know, SPI flash chip and uh, any devices they're going to be trying to read firmware from it, whether it's your CPU or a BMC, um, just to have a way that be able to um, detect any attempts to write to flash. Um, so you know, in our case, Packet is a bare metal cloud. Um, we do give customers full access to the servers. and. Uh, if a uh, customer's server becomes compromised and um, whatever script is compromising it tries to uh, write to the flash to corrupt the BIOS, um, it would be nice to have a way to detect that in real time and communicate with the BMC and the server to send an alert so that we can then alert the customer. Yep. Um, very early stages of the proposal process, but um, I'm hoping it would be uh, putting together a proof of concept over the next few months. Any other questions? Yes. So I got a couple of questions about your IP export. Are you constrained to x86 architecture? Question one. Question two is how many ports? Yeah. Uh, so the, the first question was, uh, on ITX, are we constrained to any architectures? Um, no, we aren't. And actually, a packet has uh, quite a bit of um, ARM server experience. Uh, we currently have uh, the ThunderX uh, from Cavium, uh, a server that we've had available at Packet for uh, well, about two and a half years now. So. Yeah. Those, um, those don't come in that. So mostly, it's not so much that we're restricted by architecture, it's we're restricted by what's being manufactured. So those Cavium systems, like we haven't found anything smaller than ATX for those right now, unless they're proprietary form factors which don't necessarily work. Um, but we'd like to go down that path. And then second question was how many cores on the current mini ITX systems? Um, and that depends on which processor you're using. So um, we've got some processors that are as small as four core and we have some that are significantly greater than eight. It's so really just a matter of we need motherboards to be made. Um, obviously, there are plenty of x86 ITX boards floating around out there. Uh, if ARM vendors would make uh, many ITX boards, uh, they would work just the same. It's just a matter of supply. Yep. Any other questions? All right. Thanks for your time.